HBO's House of the Dragon continues to add to its audience pool each and every week, according to new data from places like Variety and Deadline. Meanwhile, Amazon Prime's Lord of the Rings spinoff show, The Rings of Power, continues to lose audiences. And as a reminder, Rings of Power started with substantially less of an audience than did HBO Max's House of the Dragon. And on top of that, based on new data from Netflix, it does indeed look like that Cobra Kai beat Rings of Power as well. We're going to talk about all these numbers and something else. I mean, at least Amazon has $1 billion investment property that is going in the right direction. Unfortunately, it's not Rings of Power. Let's get into it. Well, welcome back. Another great day here at Valiant Renegade. It's good to see everybody out there once again. And if you are like one of the many folks watching this video that are not yet subscribed, please take a moment, hit that little red subscribe button down below, turn it gray, hit that like button. That's really important for YouTube algorithms. Hit that notification bell, share this sucker out on the social medias. And of course, do leave a comment before you head out the door today. The comments, the shares, the likes, the subscribes, of course, Always very important to YouTube. We're almost to 13,000 subscribers, and I want to take a moment to thank everybody because we couldn't be here without you, the viewers, watching this. So we want to try to keep making as much high-quality content as we can because we do things differently here on Valiant Renegade. We put Hollywood through the business and financial lens of reality, and today is no different because we have a lot to talk about here, and I think this is some very, very interesting data we're going to show you how we arrived at these conclusions, especially about Cobra Kai actually beating the Rings of Power, and we're going to show you the numbers and how we got there. But let's go into a few things first. The biggest success story for Amazon Prime is unquestionably its contract with the NFL, the National Football League here in the United States. Thursday Night Football delivers a viewership touchdown for Amazon Prime Video and NFL in debut. Amazon Prime before 2022 was no stranger to the National Football League. They have been broadcasting Thursday night NFL primetime games, national broadcasts now, for a couple of seasons. The difference is that this year, Amazon signed a huge $1 billion contract, and that's just for the 2022 season. That contract extends for many seasons at a rate of around a $1 billion a year. From the article in Deadline, Amazon's Hail Mary play to bring the NFL to streaming looks like a touchdown in week one. The September 15th primetime Thursday night football gridiron battle on prime video between the Kansas City Chiefs and the Los Angeles Chargers scored an 11.9 million viewers just on the Jeff Bezos founded streamer, according to Nielsen, a third party measurement system. The debut of the franchise on Prime Video actually bops up a bit to more than 13 million when you add in local affiliates broadcasting the night of the game. And those local affiliates, of course, would be in the Los Angeles market and the Kansas City market. Overall, it looks like TNF's premiere on Prime Video further moved up to around 15 million sets of eyeballs when viewership on various devices is factored in. So that billion dollar contract that Amazon signed, it's again, at a billion dollars per year, roughly, from what we know, that has been a good investment for Amazon. And as we've always said here on Valiant Renegade, Live sports drives advertising. It doesn't matter if it's linear or streaming. Live sports is what brings in the ad buys. However, in the case of Amazon Prime, because this is very new territory, and most people aren't used to going onto Amazon Prime or, say, Netflix or anywhere else to watch live sports, there is going to be an adjustment period. And as many people noticed during the Thursday night football game last week, much of the ads that ran during that NFL game on Amazon Prime were actually for other Amazon shows, namely 
the rings of power. And that Amazon Prime advertising to pump in to that show was designed to get people who have never really watched an Amazon Prime show before to plug in after the game and go check out something else that is an Amazon Prime exclusive. Unfortunately, based on other reporting that we've seen in the last several days, in the last several weeks, it didn't really pan out as the rings of power began with a lower amount of viewership than did house of the dragon by a fair margin and has continued to decline. So all of the advertising that Amazon pumped in during Thursday night football with the chiefs and the chargers didn't seem to work well for the rings of power. And over the last week, we've all seen several articles that look like this, even from places like Forbes magazine, where Quote, the Rings of Power has inexplicably terrible writing. And of course, this has just driven fans away, or at least the fans that did tune in for the early episodes of the Rings of Power during its premiere weekend, they didn't really stick around. We have seen drop-offs week to week with this show, and that is in stark contrast to something like House of the Dragon. Because House of the Dragon, while it's averaging 29 million viewers per episode, it's rising roughly 2 to 3% week over week. And I can't stress enough how absolutely crazy that is for most television shows. Most shows, when they release, tend to get their biggest audience numbers with the premiere episode because there's a curiosity factor. There is something that's just interesting enough for audiences to tune in, but without a hook, they generally don't stick around. And even with the hook, much of that audience tends to leave. And it's very much not uncommon to see drop-offs to the tune of 20, 30, 40, or even 50% from the first week of a show's premiere to the second episode. But that's not the case with House of the Dragon. It continues to build. It's a franchise that's well-known, that's well-respected, even when considering the widely regarded, very poorly done season eight of its predecessor, Game of Thrones. But people are still tuning in for House of the Dragon nonetheless. And of course, House of the Dragon comes in with a much smaller budget than does the Rings of Power. From the article in Variety, the fifth episode of Game of Thrones prequel drew 3% more U.S. viewers than episode four. Variety has learned exclusively. Additionally, Season 1 is now averaging 29 million viewers per episode across its first five episodes. That's a massive audience for any premium cable series and a very promising sign that it's going the way of its predecessor, Game of Thrones, which averaged more than 44 million viewers per episode for its eighth and final season in 2019. The House of the Dragon Episode 5 stats combine Nielsen's measurement of Sunday's four cable airings with the number of streaming viewers across HBO Max and other HBO platforms. When isolating linear viewership, according to Nielsen, 2.576 million people tuned in to the episode on HBO itself, a 4% increase when compared to last week. Now let's stop right there for a moment because I want to address something because this is where all of the rating measurement systems get very confusing. And what you have to understand, especially with a system like HBO and HBO Max, is that it is unique in the streaming area because it is a basically, it, it's a split system, right? We still have HBO linear delivery, HBO, which is delivered through cable and satellite TV providers. And we have HBO Max, which is a streaming system. Now, if you look at the House of the Dragon, that show premiered at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time on a Sunday night, meaning that the first week that Nielsen would have captured anything streaming and overnights otherwise would have only represented three hours of that show's premiere. Whereas when you look at things like Netflix or Disney Plus or Amazon Prime, there's typically a Friday, a Thursday, or a Wednesday release now in the case of Disney Plus, where those shows have much more time during that week of Nielsen measurement. So bear that in mind as we go forward. Now, as we all may remember from a week or so ago, Amazon touted the fact that they had 25 million 
global eyeballs on the premiere of The Rings of Power. But it didn't take very long for places like Variety and Deadline, The Hollywood Reporter, and many other publications to start questioning that number and questioning the veracity of the data that Amazon was releasing on this. Amazon self-reported prime video viewership for the first time ever this month to declare that 25 million viewers worldwide streamed The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, in the series' first 24 hours of availability on the platform. This figure broke, quote, all previous records and marked the biggest premiere in the history of Prime Video, according to Amazon's own press release. Of course, there's no way of verifying this. While Prime Video content is measured by Nielsen's weekly streaming ratings data, this is the first time Amazon has publicly indicated how many people were watching any of the original series. And comparing the Rings figure to Nielsen data is not a straightforward matter. The ratings firm measures only U.S. streaming viewership in minutes viewed per week, making it difficult to determine how many people actually watched a show or movie. And that's exactly it. That's the best way to conceal data if you really want to conceal data. But Netflix reports global viewership in terms of hours watched. And that's something interesting because that is more easily brought back to a Nielsen figure which measures minutes watched in the U.S. And so we do have some kind of gauge because we can usually tell somewhere around if we have a global viewership of, say, 100, we can assume pretty safely that somewhere between 35 and 50 percent of that viewership came from the U.S. Of course, that depends on the property. If we look at something like American sports, NFL football, or if we look at Major League Baseball, we look at live sports, most of that consumption is going to be here in the U.S. And of course, depending on the actual show property, say like Cobra Kai or the Rings of Power, we can make some minute adjustments for that as well. But let's try to dig a little bit deeper into this and figure out, did Cobra Kai actually beat the Rings of Power? One wonders if the 25 million figure was simply Amazon's attempt to outclass HBO's House of the Dragon. The other blockbuster fantasy series often pitted against the rings in the press. The Game of Thrones prequel spinoff scored nearly 10 million viewers in the 24 hours following its own premiere across both linear and streaming. But that number includes only U.S. viewers. One of the multiple reasons why the available Rings and House of the Dragon data can't really be compared directly. And this is what I stated in one of my previous videos. And some have called this into question that I don't understand the numbers. I do understand the numbers. That's what we do here. And this article confirms. And this was the big problem. Amazon declared a global figure for Rings of Power, and HBO declared a U.S.-only figure for House of the Dragon. And this is why Amazon went that route. If they really wanted to go toe-to-toe -to -toe and brag about how well their show did, 24 hours after the House of the Dragon, 24 hours after HBO released those numbers, then they would have come up with the U.S. figure. They didn't. They deliberately shunted to a global figure to give the false impression that the Rings of Power had had a huge weekend when, in fact, it didn't. According to a later press release, the first episode's viewership grew to over 20 million in the week following its debut. It actually went to 25. And Warner Brothers Discovery uh, CFO Gunnar Winfields said this week the episode has now been seen by, quote, well north of 30 million viewers. You see, HBO Discovery keeps giving us updates on how many people have gone back now that the series has gotten into a maturity process halfway through with five episodes out. How many people have actually gone back and watched from the beginning? They're now saying that the first episode has been watched by over 30 million people. Now, that's a big number, and that's only in the U.S. And with that kind of number, that is absolutely destroying the Rings of Power, probably somewhere on the order of three to one at this point. So with constant media like this from major business and cultural publications, four episodes in and the Rings of Power has not swayed audiences, according to Paul Tassi of Forbes magazine, we can kind of see now 
that the petal is coming off the rose. The polish is coming off the turd. As much as maybe people decided to tune in out of pure morbid curiosity in the opening week or two weeks of the Rings of Power, those audiences are largely leaving. And that is being confirmed more and more each and every day. And that brings us to this. Did Cobra Kai on Netflix during its opening week rack up more viewership than the Rings of Power on its opening week? Signs point to a definitive yes. Now, since Amazon decided to give us a global viewership figure for the Rings of Power's opening weekend, we can compare that to Netflix's top 10 global figures as well even though they don't use the same metric. You see, while Amazon reported, here's the number of eyeballs that watched our show, Netflix reports how many hours were viewed for a given program during a given week of measurement. And let's remind everybody, even the major media outlets have continued to question Amazon's figures, just as that article we saw from Variety Magazine. Did Amazon measure viewership linearly for the rings of power or did they count a single viewer who watched the first and second episode of amazon's rings of power as two separate views one for each episode i think that's a strong possibility because amazon revealed so little context with that data that it's almost impossible to discern and quite frankly i think they intended to do that now, if we look back here, Cobra Kai Season 5, for its first debut weekend, came in at number one on Netflix with 106.7 million hours watched on a global measurement. Not U.S. only, but global, okay? Now, Cobra Kai dropped on Friday morning at midnight. So we got a full solid 72 hours or three days worth, just as with any new Netflix product of measurement during that week, 106.7 million hours viewed. If we go to the next week, the first full week of Cobra Kai, we'll get a total of 95.55 million hours viewed. So over the first 10 days, 200 million hours hours of Cobra Kai was consumed for its premiere. So how do we get that figure to match up with Amazon Rings of Power's figure, or at least get the same common denominator so that we can make an educated presumption on who watched what show more? One of the things that we do know pretty definitively is that if anybody is going to watch a new show, the vast majority of those views are going to come within the first 24 hours. But in the case of binge models, like things that Netflix drops, like Ozark or Stranger Things or Cobra Kai in this case, the dynamic is a little bit different. More people tend to watch more heavily front-loaded, and by the first 10 days, the bulk of those new views have happened. Now, that's not to say by the time we get the data for the second full week of Cobra Kai that it's going to be off the top 10. It surely won't. It's probably going to still pull in somewhere around 40 to 60 million watch hours globally of that show, and we'll talk about that when that comes out. But in the case of this, let's take this a piece at a time. We have to look at this in terms of global watch hours, and Amazon gave us a global viewership figure. We just have to bring these numbers together to figure out which show was more watched. Well, we can get pretty close. Cobra Kai racked up 106.7 million hours viewed globally over that first three days. Now, if we were to assume that everybody who watched Cobra Kai binged it to its completion in those three days, which is almost completely impossible. We know from previous data that never happens, but we have to set a base floor for what is the minimum audience size that that 106.7 million hours viewed represents. If we break it out to minutes viewed, and then we assume that they all watched every episode to completion, that means that somewhere around 18 million people around the world 
watched Cobra Kai from start to finish during its opening weekend as a bare minimum. Now, again, that figure is incredibly unrealistic. 18 million would be the lowest audience possible for that show, meaning 18 million people, again, would have had to watch all of Cobra Kai from start to finish in order for that metric that Netflix published to be correct. But from what we know from reality, that doesn't happen. Probably half or less than half of the number of people who watch Cobra Kai finished the entire show that weekend. That means that realistically, somewhere closer to 30 to 36 million viewers watched Cobra Kai during that opening. And what did Amazon Prime report during its opening? Well, it was about 25 million. And what did Amazon not qualify as? Was that 25 million views based on both episodes? Or was that 25 million views based on episode one and two? In other words, could there have just simply been about 12 to 13 million people who watched Rings of Power during its opening weekend and watched both episodes, and each of those episodes counted as its own independent view. These are the questions that we need answers to, Amazon, because you have shrouded your publications, you have shrouded your press releases, and the numbers that you have delivered in a whole heap of mystery, and places like Variety and Forbes have not let it go unnoticed. We see you guys. So be a little bit more transparent because as of right now, what it looks like is that Sensei Johnny Lawrence and Daniel LaRusso kicked your ass. And don't forget, this was all done with Cobra Kai on a budget that was a paltry, tiny, almost indeterminable fraction of the amount of money that was spent to create the Rings of Power. It's on you, Amazon. Good luck. Thanks for watching the video. Hit that like and subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. Share this sucker out on the social medias. And of course, until next time, leave a comment and I'll see you around. Take care.